In this lesson, I want to look at just a few identifying the right service type based on a particular use case. If we look at the skills assessed, we're really just looking at the last one in this category. We're looking at this idea of identify a service type based on the use case. So we're gonna dive into that particular skill. Now we previously drew all of these different types. We had the idea of running things on premises, infrastructure as a service, i.e. a VM, platform as a service of which there were different types, and then software as a service where a complete business function is delivered. So how do we use which and why? Again, where possible, I would like that business function delivered to me. So I'm gonna go for that software as a service offering as much as I can. So if someone said to me, I need a messaging solution, I need email, I need collaboration, I'm probably gonna go and look at something like Microsoft 365. I have zero desire to really go and install Exchange and SharePoint and all of those things. It can just be delivered for me. Hey, I wanna move these domain controllers or file servers from on-premises to the cloud. In this case, if I still need that type of service and I'm kind of lifting and shifting, that probably is not gonna run in an app service or even a container. I'm probably gonna use a virtual machine. So if I have some requirement that I need still direct access to the operating system and full access and full control of the OS, that's gonna be IaaS. I need to run it inside a virtual machine. If I have something that is maybe a web service, hey, I'm running uh, Apache Tomcat, I'm running IIS on Windows, and I wanna move this to Azure, and I really wanna try and minimize the amount of responsibility I have, anytime you see web-based, that's probably a nice thing for Azure app services that will run as part of an app service plan. If I have a scenario where I wanna run a single container. I just have some Docker image that I need to run. That could be an Azure container instance. But if we say we have some microservice-based architecture that's using containers, but I need auto scale capabilities, I need richer networking integration, I need to have these larger scale deployments, so I need an orchestrator. Well, Kubernetes is kind of the gold standard in container orchestration. So the AKS, the Azure Kubernetes service, would most likely be what we're gonna do if we have any kind of container-based workload, we need to run in a full, rich Azure environment. There are other ways to run containers. I can even run containers as part of an app service plan. But if we talk about the core key service, typically, it's gonna be AKS. Now, maybe I have, I need to run this unit of work. Any time a certain file gets written to a storage account or a message gets written to a queue, that screams serverless. And if I want kind of that rich code and triggering, that's probably gonna be Azure Functions. If the requirement is, I want to be able to graphically design a series of steps when some things happen. Maybe someone tweets something, or maybe a, I do get some file on FTP. I wanna go and call some sentiment, but I really wanna make sure I don't have to do a bunch of coding. We think about this no code world. I wanna to to use this nice logical flow. Well, that's gonna be a logic app. I don't have to do coding. I can drag and drop these various components. So there are different types of service, but they very much scream out for a certain type of workload where it is the best fit. 